It's possible that many of us have concerns about fueling the aircraft carriers, and in the middle of the oceans no less. About the challenges, battles, and overall process that exists, we shall show the incredibly thrilling content of refueling an aircraft carrier in the middle of the ocean. In today's film, we shall witness today's refueling of the amazing aircraft carriers that we have all heard so much about. That's way too thrilling. Let's begin the video without further ado. Aircraft carriers are essential to both offensive and defensive plans, and air forces have long been a key element of national defense. In circumstances where property operations are impractical, the range of fighters and reconnaissance jets is greatly extended by these gigantic ships. Up to 90 aircrafts can typically be transported on most aircraft carriers, though many of them are kept on the flight deck to maintain readiness, while others are kept below in the hangar bay. The majority of any country in the world, the United States, currently owns 11 of these floating cities. In almost all circumstances, they are among the most adaptable and cutting-edge ships. The only carriers that often refuel at seas are warships. As the receiving vessel or vessels approach the tanker, a light line is shot over using a specially designed rifle. This is connected to a winched over refueling hose of the receiving vessel, which has a fuel pipe on it. The required fuel is then forced across. US aircraft carriers must refuel at sea even though they are nuclear powered and only take aviation fuel. Although it is quite amazing to see three massive ships in such close formation, station maintenance is essential because all of the ships are currently moving. The process is known as Replenishment Refueling at Sea, or RAS in the Royal Navy. There are numerous other smaller elevators as well. These elevators are made to transport weapons from the ship's magazine to the flight deck, where they can be loaded into the aircraft. They are usually situated behind the launch area to ensure the planes can be armed and in the air as quickly as possible. The operation has advanced significantly in terms of effectiveness and safety since the first replenishment, during which the disturbance was discovered in 1899. The first difficulty is deciding on the course of replenishment. Of course, protection against enemy attack comes first, but the state of the sea is equally important. Resupplies are normally carried out in Sea State 4. Although with a highly trained crew on both the supplying and receiving sides, they can be accomplished in Sea State 5. In addition to the emergency breakaway protocols that call for the vessels to separate promptly, the fact that the majority of replenishment ships are large enough to carry out dual transfer rigs for two receivers simultaneously makes the already difficult task more and more difficult. Everyone on board must take this into consideration in their planning, calculations, execution and attention. The accompanying connected replenishment notion is another name for the connected unwrapping approach. Any variation in the system will have a major impact on the separation gap on a fast-moving vessel, which is why two or three ships running side by side must keep the same path and speed throughout the operation. Due to this, the highly knowledgeable and experienced citizens pay close attention to how far apart the two moving ships are from one another. The ideal distance between the two moving vessels changes with their speed. The most common connected replenishment method is the standard tensioned alongside process or stream because it enables a larger separation gap once the supplying and receiving vessels are in a parallel position. Leaving room for a shot line to be shot across that will serve a variety of functions, including communication and separation marker shot lines for other replenishment stations, and the transfer process can begin. The probe fueling coupling features a latching mechanism in the receiver that is activated by spring tension and is attached at the end of the hose. A manual release lever or the application of two 500-pound line poles can be used to physically detach it. Another unrep technique is vertical replenishment, which involves using a helicopter to transport gasoline and other essential supplies, but requires more work. Under ideal circumstances, the steam rig system is capable of supporting loads up to 8,750 pounds. This method is not the best for sharing gasoline because the maximum load and transfer speeds are limited by the helicopter's capabilities. 
The V4 division is responsible for receiving, storing, testing, and providing the JP-5 aviation fuel for the aircraft flying aboard the ship. They take a sample of the transferred fuel for testing. The collected sample is spun in a container to create a vortex in order to check for water and sediments. The centrifugal cleaner can do this by spinning at 4,100 revolutions per minute. Only clean, clear, and bright energy comes out of the centrifugal purifier. The Nimitz-class aircraft carrier can carry up to 3 million gallons of aviation fuel and accommodate the operation of 85 to 90 fixed-wing aircraft and helicopters. The nuclear-powered ship can go for years without refueling, but the aviation fuel it uses burns quickly and needs regular replenishments more than ever. The starboard side hatches must be clear of all hands. The presence of the U.S. Navy around the world is a representation of the methods employed by the highly trained members of the naval force to guarantee that the risky operation runs are carried out appropriately and securely. Most aircraft carriers have a carrying capacity of up to 90 aircraft, though most of them are maintained on the flight deck to assure readiness while others remain below in the hangar bay. They are among the most adaptable and technologically advanced ships in use. The spent reactor core must be removed and replaced with a new body containing fresh nuclear fuel during refueling. A substance containing wasted atomic energy must be removed from a reactor using intricate radiological handling procedures due to its excessive radioactivity. Around 25 years into their intended 50-year service life, carriers visit the shipyard for a procedure known as the refueling and complex overhaul. It could take 3 to 5 years to completely restore and renovate the ship. The reactors, one for each of their reactors, are refueled among other things. The lengthy, thorough process of restoring and refurbishing the ship could take 3 to 5 years. Among the things that receive refueling are reactors. In high-tempo operations, it will be easy to run out of pilots because these are normally 1.5 crew per aircraft. The days can still be very long, even with the additional dozen or so pilots on board who can help. It takes a few hours to plan a conventional military operation. Delays of up to a day can be brought on by significant strikes. A couple hours prior to launch, you are briefed, you man up for 45 minutes, and you spend the next hour debriefing. Refueling the plane takes place in between flying operations. It only takes a few hours because they don't let the supply drop below a certain proportion. It doesn't significantly affect combat operations as long as the resupply ships can operate in the same region as the ship's firing strikes. If the ship needs to run outside to get the gas, the distance will reveal. Despite having substantially lower capacity factors than a nuclear power plant, new cores are designed to last 50 years in carriers and 30 to 40 years in the majority of submarines. Their fundamental lifespan is quite long. Refueling is therefore only required after 10 or more years. The price of the significant repairs and refueling is estimated to be $5.5 billion. However, according to a 2014 Defense Daily report, decommissioning a Nimitz-class carrier at the time would have cost about $2.5 billion. We've reached the conclusion of the video with that. I hope you have all had your questions about the aircraft's refueling at sea answered. Please like and subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more like it.